So in this um, screencast video, we'll be looking into how to design a doubly reinforced beams. Uh, so first we need to understand when do we need to design a doubly reinforced beam. Some instances, um, the, the width and the depth of the beams may be restricted due to different reasons. It may be architectural reason or the height requirement in the building. So for different reasons, the width and the depth of the beam might be restricted. But it may be that the width and the depth that is given to you may be not adequate to um, is quite small than the the moment demand that is the M star. So in that case, uh, what will happen is that when you calculate Ku, EK, Ku term will come greater than zero point four. So if Ku is coming zero greater than zero point four, what it means is that your beam is brittle it will be in failing in a brittle failure mode and it is not a desirable failure mode as you know so one way to avoid this is to uh, change the dimension of the beam to revise the width and the depth of the beam and as i said if this b and d are restricted then you need to go for comp compression reinforcement so that you can bring ku value less than 0.4 and make the beam ductile so to design the uh, double, double reinforced beam when there is a compression re reinforcement involved, uh, these are the design steps that you need to follow. The first step is um, you need to, of course, calculate the design moment from the factor load. So first you have to calculate the factor load using all the uh, load factors and then calculate the demand moment, M star. And the next step is to check whether single reinforced beam is adequate or not. That means whether you, do you need a uh, compression reinforcement or not that you need to determine uh, so what you do what you will do is uh, using the approximate method you need to estimate what is the tensile reinforcement required to take this moment so the, your moment demand is m star so using the approximate method, you can find out what is the area of steel required for the given B and D required to take M star. So to find the approximate, to use the approximate method, what we do is that the lever arm jet, that is the distance between the compression force and the tension force, we'll assume it to be 0.85D, around 0.85D. So with that assumption, what we can do is we can roughly estimate what is the tensile strength required for the given moment. So what we do is that uh, the moment um, capacity is nothing but the tensile force multiplied by the liver arm jet. And now if we simplify the liver arm as 0.85D, we can estimate that the area of reinforcement required to, to carry that moment demand M star is given by this equation. So area of steel has to be greater than this value in um, to take that moment. So with that area of steel, you can find out what is the KU value. If KU is coming greater than 0.4 and if B and D is restricted and that's when you will be required to provide compression reinforcement. Now as I said if KU value is coming greater than 0.4 mainly because your moment is high and your B and D are small in that case you have to go for the compression reinforcement. So to design for the compression reinforcement these are the substates that you need to follow. So the first, for the first thing, what you need to do is um, take the value of Ku that is desirable. So in this case, we will be taking Ku as 0.36. Um, so that's the, the value code, uh, many code will prescribe that if Ku is less than 0.36, it will be ductile uh, for the W info section. So Ku is uh, taken as 0.36 in this example and also um, it prescribed by the code. Uh, so for the W reinforced design, we will take KU as 0.36. So with that value, we can estimate what would be your compression um, compression force in the concrete. So here in this uh, diagram that you are familiar with, the KU value is taken as 0.6. With that, you can actually calculate what would be your compressive force CC. And let's go, uh, let's proceed with that. So as you know, KU, you can find uh, the gamma KU de factor. That means uh, this block is defined now. So once KU is taken as 0.36, uh, 
what you can do is you can find out what would be your gamma KUD, that is the depth of the compressive block in concrete. And once the depth of the compressive block in concrete is known, you can find out what is the corresponding compressive force taken by the concrete. So compressive force taken by the concrete is given by CC, which is alpha 2 FC dash, multiplied by gamma KUD, multiplied by the width of the beam. So all the parameters are known here. And again, remember KU is taken as 0 0.36. So that will give you the total compressive force taken by the, the compressive block in the concrete. Now, taking a moment about the tensile reinforcement here. So the, the total moment capacity contributed by the concrete block would be CC, the compressive force taken by the concrete, multiplied by this lever arm Z1, where the Z1 is D, overall uh, the effective depth of the concrete, uh, the tensile reinforcement, minus gamma KUD over 2. So you know the lever arm for compressive force. So once you know the lever arm for compressive force, you can actually compute what is the moment capacity contributed by the concrete block. So moment capacity contributed by the concrete block is nothing but CC, the compressive force, multiplied by the lever arm Z1. So plugging back the values of CC and Z1, you can calculate the moment capacity contributed by the concrete block. Now, once you know the moment capacity contributed by the concrete block, you can calculate what is the moment that needs to be taken by the compressive steel CS. Uh, the, uh, that means, as, as you know, we, are, we need to provide the compressive reinforcement. So what we are trying to find is what is the moment capacity that is contributed by this compressive steel? So the moment capacity that is need to need to be contributed by the compressive steel is MU2, which is equal to the total moment capacity MU minus the moment capacity which is already being contributed by the compressive block that we just computed. So the total moment capacity minus um, the moment capacity contributed by the concrete block will be the moment that needs to be taken by the compressive steel. So the force, the compressive force that needs to be taken by the compressive steel, that is CS, can be computed as the moment capacity divided by this lever arm Z2. So the moment capacity taken by the compressive steel divided by the lever arm Z2 will give you the compressive force taken by the compressive steel. So now you can calculate the strain in compression steel as we always do with using the strain compatibility equation using this similar triangles here, the small triangle and the bigger, bigger triangle. You can find out what is the, the strain, compressive strain in the compressive steel. Here, the parameter DSC is the effective depth for uh, this steel. And once you know the strain, you can calculate what is the stress in compressive, compressive steel by multiplying it with E, that is the strain in steel multiplied by the Young modulus of steel will give you the compressive steel, compressive stress in the compression steel. And once you know the compressive stress in compression steel, you can easily find the area required in the compression side. That is just dividing your total compressive force CS divided by the steel um, stress, you will get the total area that is required in the compression. So that is how we can find out what is the total area of steel required in compression. So that is one thing that you need to find out, the total area of compression steel. So we have already found on ASC in that way. Now the second thing is to find what is the area of steel required in the tension. So that can easily be, easily be done with these steps. So to find the area of steel required in tension side, you, you will first need to find what is the tension force that is to be taken by this steel. So the tension force that is taken by the steel equals to the compressive force that is taken by the compression block plus the compression force that is taken by the steel. So that means T is equal to CC plus CS. So if you add those, those two parameters, you'll get the tension force that is needed to be taken by the tension steel. That means the area of the tension reinforcement is AST equals to the total tensile force divided by FSY. 
that will give you the, the area required in the tension side. Now here we are assuming that uh, the tension steel is yielding so that we can take the stress in tension reinforcement as FSY. Uh, of course this needs to be checked when you are checking the design again. So that means we already found the area of steel in compression and here we are finding the area of steel in tension. So B and D is already provided so you already find what is the area of steel in compression and area of steel in tension and that's what you need to do for the design. So the final remaining step is now to provide uh, the required uh, number of bars and the diameter of bars so that you meet the AST and AAC requirements. So choose the bars, choose the number of bars and the diameter of the bars so ASC and AST requirement are satisfied. And um, final two steps is that you need to provide the drawing, uh, detailed drawing uh, with all the dimensions and finally you will need to check, uh, do the do the checking of your design again. So what basically uh, do all the calculations again, find out what is the value of KU with all this scenario and, and, and find out whether it is ductile or not and whether the moment capacity is satisfied or not. So that's all the steps that is required for you to design a, a W reinforced section. And a couple of things to consider when you are doing a W reinforced section is that when you have uh, quite many reinforcement in tension side or compression side, it may often be necessary to put the reinforcement in two layers, in, especially in the tension side. Um, when you are using compression reinforcement, um, you will need to restrain the compression reinforcement using stirrups. So the role of the stirrups becomes very critical when you are having a doubly reinforced section. That means when you have compression reinforcement, there is a chance of buckling of the steel in compression side. So you need to provide the stirrups of adequate di di diameter. If high shear occurs at the same section, large diameter of stirrups will be required as well. And of course, all initial assumptions and approximations should be checked as well. So that means once you design the beam, you'll need to actually check it, find KU values, find actual MU values, and make sure that it meets the moment and the ductility requirement as well.